My name's Adam O'Connell. I was born in London. Uh, grew up in South Norwood in Croydon for the first six years of my life. Um, my parents split up around that age and then I moved out to Epsom with my mum. My mother didn't really give me a very religious upbringing at all. She comes from Catalonia in Spain, more or less. And um, she already knows about the, rela the relationship that there was between the dictatorship in Spain and the Catholic Church. So they were always skeptical of at least institutional religion in the Christian world. So they just told me the stories of Jesus and so on and Easter. But to me, they were just stories, really. When I moved to Epsom with my mum, first I went to a primary school that was a Church of England primary school. So there, actually, I became more aware of Christian religion. But then after, and, and, and I did kind of start to believe it even. But then I went to high school, a completely secular one. And over a number of years, uh, I just started to lose all, all my religious feeling because it wasn't doing anything for me, really. When we came to Epsom, my mum tried to find things for me to do. So like she'd send me to scouts and stuff. But after, as I got a bit older into the more uh, problematic ages of the teenage spectrum, I started saying, no, nah, allow that. I want to go out <laughs> and get drunk, right? So I was doing that for a while, but I couldn't go on like that. Around that sort of time as well, my mum started to get a bit upset with my drinking because I was getting very drunk with my friends, coming back home quite late at night, in a bit of a state sometimes. But uh, yeah, so I was getting tired of drinking around this sort of time. But at the same time, in school I was learning history. And through learning history in school, I began to understand politics a little more because we learned, for GCSE, we learned the history of the Cold War and I just kept investigating and investigating. And this is around the kind of time that Wikipedia came out on the internet, I think. So I learned a lot more from investigating myself than I did from the history classes, which were basically saying, oh, you know, just the typical kind of what the Americans or the British would teach about the Cold War, basically. That it was one, that it was the free capitalist West versus the unfree, Soviet East, and of course it's never that simple. I started losing my, the, the, the basic belief or acknowledgement of Christian narratives that I learned in school from Church of England school while I was at high school. At the same time I was learning more about Marxism and the idea of equality, economic equality, polit political equality made so much more sense to me that when Marx also then said, there is no God, as I was becoming less religious, it just made sense to me as well. And for a while, I was being a Marxist and so on, but not really understanding it at the same time. It was a bit of a religious choice, if I'm honest. Anyway, after a while, uh, I studied a bit more philosophy and then just climbed down from that assumption that there is no God. Um, I saw the, the argument that, you know, the universe can't come from nothing, that for me is very basic. And I just looked up, the, our religious studies teachers suggested us to look up at the sky or something and see what was amazing about the universe around us. And I did that and I considered the argument about nothing can come out of nothing and I considered the other argument that there is no such thing as right and wrong if there's no objective, absolute definer of that, which would have to be God. And so I became a, relig I became a non-religious theist. So I was not following any religion, but I believed in God and I was still a socialist, economically, politically speaking. But I carried on with my, with my drinking, with my stupid young life, meeting those privileged old socialists who don't really do anything and the li my life was a mess of contradictions. So it was only a matter of time when, that I would see a religion 
or if it made sense, then I would go for it. Because I believed in God, I believe in justice, but the only problem is, is that none of these things were linked. So literally I was ready, it, you could say, for Islam to come into my life. And then the war in Lebanon, when Israel invaded, happened in 2006. I was a bit of a rebel in a kind of naive way. So I was like, yeah, I love, I love guerrilla groups and all this, and yeah, uh, the Colombian guerrillas are awesome and kind of thing, you know, because they're Marxists and they're fighting for their freedom and nothing else. But then when, uh, when I saw Hezbollah's resistance against Israel, I looked at Hezbollah and I was like, okay, they're 100% religious, top to bottom, but they're still doing that kind of socialist thing of communal resistance um, and looking after your people. Because I, I, I read they were building hospitals and schools again after the war. Um, yeah, so I, I decided from that point on to start looking and reading into Islam because I did feel like that I had a bit of a vacuum in my life because I was going out drinking, enjoying myself, but then I supposedly believed in justice and I supposedly believed in God, but I didn't, you know, these, all, these things, all these three things just don't go together. To be honest, like, uh, I, knew I, had to, I knew I'd have to make a change, but I didn't go about looking to make one. Literally, the, the, war in, the war in Lebanon happened and that made me want to research Islam more. And I looked at any old thing on the internet that seemed reliable, that seemed plausible, of course. And then the more I read, the more I agreed, you know, whether it was about the, the ideas about the family or the ideas about economics or the ideas about treatment of orphans and such, um, justice for the oppressed. I just agreed more and more with it. But then I thought, okay, maybe I should buy the actual Quran now. So I ordered one off Amazon, clandestinely, sort of, because I didn't, at that time, I didn't want my mum to know. And again, the more I read, the more I agreed. I didn't even necessarily want to agree with it. It was more a realization that, it was like a realization that this is the truth. Am I going to apply it now? Am I going to accept it now? It was more that kind of thing rather than, oh, I like that, necessarily. Of course I liked it as well, but it was, le it was not, ne it was not. <laughs> it was my choice to look for it, but when you find it, if you are sincerely looking for the truth, you have no choice but to accept it. So I'd be reading Quran on the train going to and from places on the weekend. The more I read, the more I agreed. Also, the more, the more I read, the more it seemed to me that this was not just some book, you know, that, this, that someone was speaking to me here um, through the ages. And the, one, and the one verse that kind of made me go was, was Al-Asr actually, because it just explains something to me that I felt was absolutely true. That if people, uh, if people don't do good things, don't seek the truth. And for me, the truth, for me, the truth was always important. Uh, and, and don't be steadfast or patient, then you'll fail, you'll get lost. If you don't do those three things, as well as believe, of course. But at that time, Obviously, belief wasn't the number one priority. But I read that verse and it was like, wow. And then even before I finished reading the Quran, I had I kind of decided that I must be a Muslim now because I believe this. Um, and I didn't really go around saying it for a while. But then eventually I thought, okay, I'm gonna start telling people I'm Muslim because, you know, if I'm, if I, if I follow the truth, or if I claim to follow the truth, and I find that this is the truth, then I have to stay true to that. 
otherwise what kind of person am I, <laughs> right? So I'd severely cut down alcohol by this point as well. And basically what I'd decided to do was to have my last drink of alcohol ever on New Year's Eve 2006, 2007. And I did that. It wasn't a very special night anyway. Um, and then after that, I started telling people that I was Muslim. From an online forum, I met a Pakistani British guy from Slough. Uh, and he, and, and, and he, he, he had found out that I was kind of converting to Islam but that I was alone. So he agreed to meet me in London just to chat because we knew we kind of agreed with each other politically as well. Um, we were both quite critical of Zionism, the neocons. So we met in London, had some shisha, chatted. And then he was like, have you done your shahada? And I was like, no, I haven't, you know. And he was like, oh, do you want to go do it? Not, not forcing me, but kind of like suggestively, like, yeah, why, let's, let's do it, why not? But my attitude was wrong. I shouldn't have been like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Because it's, because it's actually much deeper than that. You, when, you, when, you, when you make your shahada, ideally it's when you're prepared to start praying five times a day. You know how to do wudu, you know how to do this, you know how to do that, but I didn't know anything. But anyway, I went to the mosque, my friend pray. I didn't really know how to pray. So I just kind of imitated with his guidance after. Um, then with the boss, the Egyptian journalist as a witness and my friend as another witness, we did the Shahada. I did feel kind of accomplished after that. But, and I got, and I even got the form saying, you know, like, I don't know, it's a kind of certificate if you need to go on Hajj and stuff. But then afterwards I went home with the, with the Shahada thing, the Shahada certificate in my pocket, because it was raining. And I was like, yeah. But unfortunately, what happened next? This was around summertime. I, can, I did the Shahada about six months after I had felt in my heart that I wanted to become Muslim. So what happened? It was summertime. Um, I didn't know how to pray, didn't know how to do wudu. Ramadan started, right? And I was fasting. That wasn't too much of a problem for me. But I was, so I was fasting, uh, I was basically not eating, you could say, but not praying because I just, I, I, do, I do like some kind of sujood with something, whatever I knew of Surah Al-Fatiha, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything, right? It was just kind of my own made up thing because I had nothing else to do at the time. So I continued going to school, right? Um, they were telling, they were asking us what we wanted to do to, for uni. At the beginning, I just said, okay, I'll do broadcast journalism because broad, because journalism is about what's happening in the world, and I'm, I suppose I'm interested in that. Maybe not in that way, but maybe it will lead to things, kind of thing. I went for a few interviews. Well, I went for one interview at one uni actually, and I hated it because it was actually at Staffordshire University, and the guy who interviewed me. I don't know what I wrote in my CV, but he somehow figured out that I'd read the Quran or something. And, um, and he was like, yeah, have you read? He, was, he asked me, have you read the Quran? I was like, yeah. And he goes, scary, isn't it? And that just, that, I, was, I was just like, whoa, okay. This is not my place <laughs> here, kind of thing. Um, and maybe broadcast journalism isn't my subject. I, I didn't even really want to do it in the first place. But all this pressure, Apply, apply. In the end, I just said, okay, you want me to apply? I'll do what I want. I'll do Islamic studies, <laughs> right? Uh, even if it's a Mickey Mouse subject, I'll do that because that's what I'm interested in. That's the only thing I really want to do. Um, so in the end, I put down Islamic studies. So I went through the first year of Islamic studies, learning about Islam in a general sense, in depth, but general in a kind of academic way. Um, but I wasn't making very much progress in my personal life. Plus, as a way of escaping 
the drunken, the, the, the senseless, cultureless drunkenness of English students, I gravitated more towards foreign students from Europe, especially Spanish ones, because I can speak Spanish to them and, you know, it's nice, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So I didn't make progress with regard to my personal belief for quite a while. But then after my first year, I met some Arab guys from Jordan and they were very nice and they just, and they accompanied me during that Ramadan as well. And they just sorted me right out. They was like, Look, here's, some, here's some videos on YouTube. Watch me, watch me do it. You say this and you say this and you say this, you know the sort of, shall we say, mundane daily aspects of Islamic practice. That was the stuff I didn't learn from a whole year of Islamic studies, right? So from, so really, like, you know, I converted in my heart around New, around New Year's 2006, 2007, but it took six months to take the Shahada. But then even then, it took me another year before I even knew how to pray properly. But over time, and I had some supportive friends from my course, over time, it became easier and easier to become a Muslim. Um, the uni prayer room was a very nice, welcoming environment. And while I was at uni, I got involved in the, in a, in the Friends of Palestine Society there, who was being run by another revert. And uh, that was a big defining part of my life at uni throughout the second year. So becoming Muslim and at the same time doing awareness work and organizing events about Palestine, the Palestinian struggle. It was a good time. Uh, and, and, I, and, it, and I was really forming myself as a person towards where I am today. My advice to potential reverts is first of all when you study when you look at religions judge the religions by their own merits by their principles their ideas are they logical does it make sense does it feel right in terms of right and wrong um, rather than looking at religious people because religious people can do all sorts of things <laughs> or so-called religious people you know um, Secondly, make sure you find some practicing Muslim friends. It's one of the most important things. Just to get you to know, uh, get you to learn the basics, how to pray, what uh, du'as for this and that, etc. Um, make sure you go to the mosque at least every Friday, if not more. Uh, it will keep regenerating your, your willingness to keep going. And, um, and as for people who feel that they don't want to enter into a particular religion because they don't like organized religion or whatever, um, they should ask themselves, who are they, who are they uh, to decide that they know what is right in contrast to religions which are thousands of years old? So if, you, if you're confident that you know better, fine but do you really know better? That's the advice I'd give to them. <laughs> Basically, Hezbollah as a movement and Ali Shariati as an intellectual thinker who tried to, who tried to see the commonalities between socialism in a general sense of strong state welfare for the people and Islam See, see the commonalities there. So that group and that man were the biggest influences in terms of my f religious and political formation together because he was a Muslim, he was an Islamic revolutionary in Iran and a socialist at the same time. And he was the person who introduced to me this idea that, that uh, Islam is not just a recent thing, but it's something that goes throughout history. There's a book by him, but it's actually a transcription of two of his lectures. And it's called Religion versus Religion. And basically he says, look, the history of the world is not 
people who believe versus people who don't believe. What it really is, is people who believe one thing and people who believe another thing. His basic, his basic theory was that throughout history, religion goes through a similar process whereby you have monotheists who follow the religion of God, who give the message to the people, then over time, either the people become corrupted or a corrupt priest class emerges, and then they corrupt the religion, and then it deteriorates, deteriorates until another prophet has to come, right? And that's, that's his kind of argument, that it's, it's not religion versus non-religion, it's, it's the true religion versus the corrupted religion throughout human history, right? So, you know, the Quran and Islam is appealing because it confirms and it, com it confirms the veracity of previous texts which are less accessible because of their translation, 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 or because they don't exist, but it also corrects the other two monotheistic religions on things and beliefs and ideas that are very pr problematic for a lot of people. Another thing about Islam, a misperception that people have is that it's an Arab religion, that it starts with Muhammad, and Muhammad is the prophet of Islam, true. But actually Islam says that he is the last prophet of God. So it goes back and back, including Jesus, including Abraham, Moses, back to Adam, the first man. So really, there is Islam, TM, which is promoted by Saudi Arabia or whoever you want, whoever it is promoted by which looks like an Arab religion or a Pakistan religion or a recent religion from the last thousand or more years. But what is described in the Quran and the book and the ideas and the scholars is actually something deeper that goes far back. So the idea of being a Muslim is not just being someone who follows Islam, so that's your label. Rather, being a Muslim is a title that you get by doing certain things like praying five times a day and the prophets before Muhammad prayed, fasted, they did all the similar things. So what Islam means to me is basically, it's, it's a religion which outlines how things are structured in the universe with God as the creator, originator, all power comes from him. So Islam is something that enables you to better understand your place in this world in terms of dunya versus akhira and that kind of stuff. But also in a worldly sense, it provides me great moral prescriptions. Uh, it encourages great things like helping orphans. It's a great reminder of what you should do in order to stay focused in life and um, and yeah and it helps me stay focused in my in my own mission for, to look for justice in this world <laughs>